Today, we're going to explore Egypt and the secrets of the Nile. And I've got some insider secrets of how you can see temples, monuments, royal tombs that very few visitors are ever allowed into. I'm Larry Gelwicks, the getaway guru. The purpose of my travel channel is to help you see the world, travel more, and pay less. And if you're new to my travel channel, please remember the big three. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the notifications, which is that little bell that you see. So when I post a new travel video, you can be the first to know. And lastly, if you like this video, please do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. It's the like button at the bottom of the page. What is the mystery and the intrigue that captivates Egypt to all of us? Maybe it's the secrets of the pharaohs that put a spell on us. Well, I recently did a webinar in conjunction with Ama Waterways on Egypt and the secrets of the Nile. Let me share it with you. I'll just, my, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Larry Gelwicks and say hello to my business partner, Mark Faldmo. Hi, glad to be here. And, uh, uh, we are so grateful that you've joined us uh, here today. And uh, Brandon Oscarson, who is the business development manager for Ama Waterways, which absolutely is my favorite river cruise company. That most of their sailings are in Europe. But they also sail Egypt, Africa, and Southeast Asia. And uh, so with that introduction, Brandon, take it away. Excellent. Thank you so much. And so what I've done here is I've set it up so everyone can uh, mute or unmute themselves. So uh, if you could, I, I went ahead and muted everybody. Larry, you're going to have to unmute yourself so that you can jump in with me. And Dan, I understand that you might jump in and uh, speak with us as well. Uh, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself because I hear you're an expert in Egypt and we would love to get your feedback. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us, Larry. Thank you so much. Uh, and everyone over at Columbus Travel for putting this wonderful event together this evening. We're here to talk about uh, a new product that we will be launching September of next year. I am so excited about this. Uh, it was interesting because I, I didn't have a deep desire to go to this part of the world until I saw what we're getting ready to do over there. And it looks absolutely spectacular. And so obviously we're going to talk about things in detail here. And the wonderful part about this is we get even more detail tell because Larry has been here. He has done this and he's going to give us a lot of great feedback as well. Now, this whole itinerary with us, just to briefly summarize, it's an 11 night trip. This cannot be booked as a seven night cruise only. In this part of the world, there is way too much to do and see uh, in just seven nights. So we start you off the three nights in Cairo. Uh, we fly down to Luxor where we do a seven night cruise round trip to Luxor. And then we go back to Cairo for one more night. Now this begins September of next year. Uh, and uh, our sailings will be January through May, then September through December because during the summer months, it's just too hot to operate. Uh, in this part of the world. So our, our first sailings, uh, I believe, start on September 3rd of next year. Now, uh, and with that said, uh, just a couple things I'm gonna bring up before I even jump into everything because I got quite a few emails. Um, originally, when we had put this together, uh, the deposit was 400 per person. It is now 1,200 per person. This is a very big itinerary. So our deposit has changed. So anyone who's looking at this, that is the deposit amount. Uh, another thing that I want to add, if this interests you, do not wait to book it. Uh, you would think that we have a fire sale in place right now because we are at 70% occupancy for next year and we're already at 60% occupancy for 2022. I, I can assure you that every one of these sellings will sell out. Now, with that said, uh, here we're looking at the beautiful city of Cairo, uh, home to 22 million people. And this is actually the second capital of Egypt. Uh, Alexandria was their first capital. Uh, and uh, the 
Cairo comes from an Arabic word that means conqueror. Now, for those of you who have uh, imagined Cairo or seen images, I know that most of us have not seen this beautiful layout of the city and the Nile River cruising through it. Uh, again, this is a very exciting destination for us. Now, we are currently in the process of, of building a new ship. Well, I say building, but uh, over here, they will not allow us to put a brand new vessel on the water. Uh, they are keeping the number of ships as low as possible along the Nile. So we actually purchased a 68 stateroom vessel. We have stripped her down to the metal and we are rebuilding it completely brand new to a 34 stateroom vessel. It is our Amadalia. She is absolutely beautiful. Uh, for those of you who like to look at the layout of the ship and everything on board, uh, just uh, briefly, it is going to have all of the luxuries that you would find on one of our European vessels. Uh, if you want to look at the deck plan, you can go to our website, amawaterways.com. Uh, we've got the deck plan on there and also, uh, any of your travel advisors at Columbus Travel can help you and send you this information as well. Now, everything that I'm going to show you with the Amidalia, th these are all mock-up images because as I had stated before, this ship is under construction as we speak. Uh, now, as I mentioned, again, uh, we're going to have all the luxuries you're going to find on one of our European vessels. And we're looking at one of the, the renderings of our sun deck. We have a beautiful pool. Uh, I have been advised that there is also an elevator that will go from the lower deck all the way up to the sun deck. So for a guest who might have a little mobility issue, this makes a really big difference. Here we have our atrium, uh, the entry to the Amidalia. Now, I have been advised that uh, some of these uh, images are going to change. Uh, well, <laughs> the decor will change slightly, but we're going to stick with uh, desert uh, type decor on this particular vessel. Oh, bear with me just a moment. Okay. And here we are looking at our lounge on board the Amidalia. So uh, like our lounges uh, on board, uh, all of our other vessels, you know, we have a bar here. Uh, if you are a connoisseur of wines, we're actually going to be bringing wines from South Africa uh, up to the Nile River for this particular itinerary. But as you can see, as I go through, we are going to have absolutely beautiful accommodations, uh, very luxurious uh, that, that match uh, the destination that you're traveling to. Here we have our dining area. Uh, now, something I'm going to point out, so in Europe, we have a chef's table. On the Amidalia, we also have a chef's table. Uh, on the back right side, that little glassed-in area, uh, it's, it's a smaller chef's table. It can seat 12 guests, and uh, it's going to be a, a European-style tasting inside the chef's table here. Uh, reservations are made on board. Everybody gets a chance to dine here. Uh, with 34 staterooms, that means that only 68 guests maximum can travel on board this particular vessel. And while I'm talking about dining, I do, do want to mention that most of our foods will be shipped in from Europe. The way that they handle meats in this part of the world, we don't want to bring their fresh meats on board. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody feels safe and comfortable because uh, almost everybody who travels with us comes from North America. Uh, but I will say that all of the, the produce and the, the herbs and the seasonings will all be from the local areas. Now, to just start to give you an idea of what it's going to look like uh, when you get into your stateroom, uh, what we're looking at here is uh, one of our standard staterooms uh, on the left-hand side there. This can be configured with two twin-size beds or one oversized queen bed. Uh, with our suites, you're going to have a little more space. Uh, not only will you have your sleeping area, but you're going to have a much larger sitting area. And also with our suites, you're going to have a very large, nice bathtub in your stateroom. With all of the other staterooms, uh, you'll find that you're going to have a stand-up shower uh, and no bathtub. Now, while we're in Cairo, this is where you start off your three nights pre, we are using the Four Seasons uh, Hotel. Now, this is the highest rated hotel on TripAdvisor 
uh, for Cairo. It is absolutely beautiful. And, and the gentleman who put this together for our company, uh, he said that uh, he looks at the Four season as tranquility in a city of chaos because it's a bustling city. It's very busy. And where the Four Seasons is situated, it's a little bit south of town. It's a little bit outside of town. It's right there along the Nile River. And as you can see, it looks very serene and beautiful. And obviously, you're going to have spectacular views. You have a wonderful pool here that overlooks the Nile River. And we are going to give you luxurious accommodations. So when you go to this part of the world, you definitely want to go immerse yourself in the culture of the place that you're visiting. Uh, but at the same time, when you go to bed at night, you want the comforts that you would find at home. And here uh, at the, the Four Seasons, we have superior rooms. So they're going to be um, all towards the top of the hotel, the, the higher levels, so that you get those beautiful views. Uh, they also have Bose stereo systems inside there. So if you love to listen to music, you get some really good quality music while you're staying here with us as well. Bear with me. If I look distracted here and there, it's because I keep seeing more people joining us and I have to let them into the meeting. So I apologize if I kind of drift off for a, a brief moment there. All right. So your first day that you arrive, it is just a day to acclimate. We are not going to have any tours or excursions. Uh, the Four Seasons Hotel has uh, six to seven different restaurants that are open at one time. Uh, you can acclimate, you can spend your day just kind of relaxing. Uh, but then the next day, your excursions that are complimentary, they are included with your trip, they begin. Uh, so we're going to take you to the Egyptian Museum. It has 120,000 plus artifacts on display. It's considered to be, uh, have some of the richest artifacts uh, in the world right here. Now, this is the original Egyptian Museum. Uh, they have been working on a brand new one for quite a while now. It was supposed to open up last year. Uh, we are crossing our fingers. It'll be open in 21, but we're not holding our breath because we just don't know. Uh, if it opens, that is the museum that you will be going to visit uh, because all of the artifacts you would see here, everything will be going to this new beautiful museum. Now, Larry, ha have you been to this museum before? I would assume going to Cairo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. the National Museum, and I'm going to invite uh, Dan Hone. He's an adjunct professor of Middle East history at Utah uh, Valley University and form, formerly with BYU's Department of Ancient Scripture. Um, to, to jump in, just today Dan and I were talking about this new museum. Now in downtown Cairo is the National Museum and it is fantastic. Out in Giza, which I will call a suburb of Cairo, is uh, where you have the three famous pyramids, there's three great pyramids out there. Uh, they are the tombs of three different pharaohs, but they're building a museum out there. And Dan Hone, it's my understanding that there will be about 50,000 new artifacts and displays that have been in storage because the, the old museum could not house them. Uh, Dan, jump in here. Uh, uh, very briefly, have you heard when the new museum in Giza, which will have the full Tutankhamun collection, will open and it's going to be off the charts? Dan, you need to unmute yourself. Down on the bottom left hand side, Dan, you should see a, a little microphone. There we go. You can hear me now. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for jumping in. Okay. Appreciate First it. of all, the Giza Museum is going to have about 30,000 artifacts that have never been before the public before. They do hope that it will be open this spring. Uh, the King Tut exhibit right now is on, uh, a major portion of it is on um, uh, display and so forth in other countries. It's traveling right now. But they expect when they do the opening that it'll be there along with, it'll have the full collection. It's not just about 12,000 pieces. It's not just a portion that you saw in the old museum. It'll be the full collection, the first time the full collection has ever been on exhibit. So it's a fantastic place to go. I'm pinching myself because I expect to be there this year. Hey, uh, Dan, uh, you know, it'll open when it opens, but it, I think it's reasonable to assume at this time that the new uh, museum out in Giza would be open in March of 2022 when we're talking about going. Oh, yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, I expect by 2022 it will be open. There were a few delays because of COVID, uh, because of the pandemic, but it's uh, they've been working on it just regularly now. And they really you. are hoping to have it open by this next spring. Thank you. Back to you, Brandon. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a, a really amazing opportunity that we have here. Uh, we're going to go to the Khan El Khalili market. And something really neat is they have the world's first public coffee shop. Uh, that ever existed. It opened in 1760, and it's actually considered to be one of the best restaurants you can find in town. So uh, for lunch, we're going to take you here so you can visit and have this unique opportunity. And obviously, this marketplace is spectacular. I have not been to, the, to Cairo yet. I have been to a marketplace very similar to this in Jerusalem, and there's something to be said about all of the unique arts and crafts and little things that they use in their daily lives that you're going to find here. And Larry, I know that you and Dan have both oh, been here yeah. before. Yes. Yeah, Dan, yeah. Dan and I could talk all night. We won't. <laughs> uh, the Khan El Khalili Bazaar. But I got to tell you, folks, this is something right out of the, uh, the Arabian Nights, a thousand Arabian Nights. It is, it's very safe, uh, but it is, it is massive. I mean, it's, uh, it, maybe you've been to the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul. I like this one much better than Istanbul, but it's shopping, shopping, shopping. And I think you mentioned at this coffee shop, we're going to have lunch there. Yes. Uh, we go down there for lunch and you can wander about. And I mean, this is something that is just explodes the senses. Uh, the Khan El Khalili Bazaar. And um, I'll be there with you. And everyone, have I got a deal for you? Have I got a deal for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get your negotiating skills uh, yeah, yeah. sharpened for this. Back to you, Brandon. Thank you. All right, now we had uh, just started talking about this a little bit. Obviously, we cannot take you to Egypt without visiting the Pyramids of Giza. And yes, we do have a tour here. You're going to go and visit. now. They used to be the world's largest structures up until the 14th century. Uh, the largest pyramid, uh, over uh, two and a half million stones uh, built out of limestone and granite. Uh, there are tours to go into the tombs. We will not personally be going into the tombs, but after we give you a tour of the pyramids, we do give you free time because some of our guests want to go in the tombs. You have to be able to get into a very small place. And e even some of our smaller guests uh, will have to kind of crouch down a little bit to get inside of those tunnels. And there are areas you can't even turn around. Now, something that we don't facilitate, but you are able to do, and the reason I bring it up is because I get a lot of questions about this. There will be people who provide camel rides right outside of the pyramids. Yeah, usually it's a 15, 20 minute ride uh, and then uh, pictures with your camel. And uh, Larry, Dan, if you don't mind filling in your experiences here, that would be wonderful. You know, uh, I'll invite Dan to comment briefly on the pyramids. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the really fun things there is, is that there's a tunnel. See, the pyramids are, are basically solid, but they were used as tombs for pharaohs and there's a tunnel way that goes into the antechamber, which is right in the middle of the pyramid. And you really do have to crouch down. And that's why it is not included because, you know, not everybody can do that. And so it, it's an option is that we'll have free time. I'm going to do it. I've done it before. And uh, Norm Anderson, a.k.a. Dale Anderson, if I can do it, you can do it. All right. Uh, with that, Dan, uh, something brief, very brief on the pyramids. Well, of course, these date back to the 25th century BC, around 2450 and so forth. And uh, they're the icons of Egypt, if you will. This is where everyone wants to come. And just around the, just a short distance away, and of course, is the Sphinx itself that you want to visit. Also, I imagine our, our bus that takes us there will take us first to get a panoramic view of it. There's a great place to take pictures there. There are photographers there too, but you want to take your own pictures as well. And it's uh, it's just a great place to be. We can go through the history and everything, but I believe Larry will be sending them some of that material on the Kindles and things yeah. so that they have it all prepped. I've been working on those. Yeah. Back to you, Brandon. 
Excellent. And not only will we visit the pyramids, but we are going to visit the Great Sphinx. Uh, again, this is one of those, this is one of the things that you go to Egypt to see. Uh, head of a, uh, a pharaoh, body of a lion, uh, built 2500 BC, uh, carved out of one single stone, and it took about two to three years for them to carve this out. Uh, now, again, I, I know that you've been here, Larry. Uh, what was your experience of visiting well, this? Uh, uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, at the, you know, the armies of Napoleon, of the French armies, were there in Egypt, and it's uh, they made target practice of the nose of the Sphinx. So the Sphinx itself oh, wow. was guardians of the tombs. And I believe at the time of Napoleon, Daniel, uh, excuse me, Dan, that the sand was uh, and really only the head. Yeah, you can there. actually see in this picture where the sand was located just below the neck right there. That's why most of that is worn away in a different way because of not only there, believe it or not, as much as this looks like sand and everything, there were times in which there were inundations that came and it uh, kind of destroyed some of what was there plus the materials that it was used to build with. Also notice in the background of this picture, you'll see the lower pyramid there and it looks like it has kind of a cap on it. That's actually the pyramids originally were completely smooth stones. What you're seeing is the inside wall of that. And those stones, as much as they look like pebbles in this picture, are as big as a car. And uh, so uh, you're going to have fun climbing on some of those because you have to go up to go down in the pyramid. And by the way, it's not only tight, but you're going down and up and so forth while you're bent over. So uh, that's why I, I suppose it's probably optional. <laughs> Yes. You know, a great, a, a, a but I, I would do Kodak, it if I were with A you. great Kodak moment at the Sphinx is sitting on a camel with the Sphinx and the pyramids in the background and taking that photo, an iconic yeah. shot. Back to you, uh, Brandon. Excellent. Yeah, I agree. That sounds amazing. So uh, after you're done visiting the pyramids and the Sphinx, we're going to take you to the Mena House. Now, this is an old hunting lodge for European hunters that used to come down to Egypt. Uh, it, it was uh, structured in the 1860s. Everything is still in its original state. It's a beautiful, luxurious accommodations, uh, and you get a wonderful lunch here at this historical place uh, uh, before you finish up your day with us and then have free time to explore Cairo a little more. After that, we're going to head down to Luxor, and this is where you will be embarking on board our Amadalia. Now, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up. Luxor, a city of 500,000 people. Uh, so, and it's considered to be uh, like a, one of the world's largest open air museums. There is so much to see here. And, and Dan, I know that this is, this is your, your thing. You know a lot about this. If you wouldn't mind sharing a, a little bit about Luxor, that would be fantastic. Well, of course, Luxor is on the east side of the Nile. The west is for the dead, and that's where the Valley of the Kings is. But here you see the uh, uh, Temple of Karnak and so forth. You'll see the Isle of Sphinx that are going in there. There's another temple close to this, which is the Temple of Luxor also that you'll be visiting. Uh, this has been built and rebuilt uh, by many of the pharaohs. Uh, for those that are Latter-day Saints, uh, you'll be able to see a few things that'll kind of shock you a little bit in some ways if you haven't been to Egypt before, when you see some of the temple ceremonies and other things. Uh, you know, I could go on with this for a long time, so I'll be quiet. Larry's warned me already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, I, I'll just say this, and, and uh, Dan uh, just briefly mentioned that on the, on the uh, west, uh, uh, on the east side of the river, you find the temples. Mm -hmm. On the west side, you find, you know, the, the uh, uh, burial. Yeah, and, you know, Larry, uh, you remember that the scarab, that is the dung beetle, yeah. is one of the symbols you always see with Egypt. It actually represented uh, the rolling of the sun because they took camel dung, these beetles, and placed their uh, eggs in it, and they rolled it across the ground. And so it was representative of the sun god Ra, uh, if you will, and uh, hey there, represented that resurrection process when the one beetle dies, but then a new one springs out of this. And uh, 
uh, one other comment as you're looking at this picture, if you look in the back, you'll see those columns. It takes about 15 people to circle a column holding their arms around it. Wow, it's massive. That's how massive it is. You, you know, really I love can't it. tell from these pictures how big it is. What's really nice about this particular cruise and tour is we spend two days uh, in Luxor. And there's so much to see. Uh, for example, That's here's the temple of yeah. oh, I uh, see this, this, has a, this has a particular interest. What Art is about to say, I tell people, if you haven't seen Luxor, you haven't seen Egypt. Uh, you know, this is the ancient capital of Thebes. Uh, Cairo has been the capital for over a thousand years, but we go back thousands and thousands of years in Egypt. But here's the, the uh, temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Two comments about this particular place. Uh, some will have an interest in the Book of Abraham or the Scrolls of Abraham. There was an Italian uh, army, army officer, Antonio Libolo who was down here and out of what's known as pit, out of pit tomb 33. All right, someone needs to mute themselves, thank you. Uh, out of what's now called pit tomb 33, found these scrolls. They eventually found their way to Michael Chandler and eventually found their way to Joseph Smith. This is where the book of Abraham came from. And uh, we can actually see Pit 233. It's one of many, many things of interest here. Now, I, I've told people as I've taken groups for many years to Egypt, uh, this is a difficult name, Hatshepsut. It's hard for me to say. <laughs> yeah, well, here's how you always remember it. I say, okay, Book of Abraham was found here. Um, what was the attire or the dress of the early Christian missionaries. Well, they wore a hat and a cheap suit. And I've had people 20 years ago said they can remember this temple because, oh yeah, a hat and a cheap suit. The temple of hat, cheap suit. And of course, this goes back to the 15th century BC also. And, a, and it's a funerary temple. You know, that means it was in honor of her death, but on the walls you have scenes of her life, including uh, going clear down to Ethiopia and other places, the land of Kush and so forth. So it's, uh, it's magnificent. Excellent. Now, now, now this is something uh, unique to On the Waterways. Uh, no other river cruise line is offering this. This is not a very standard tour that you uh, take while you're uh, cruising along the Nile. We, we visit the tomb of Queen Nefertari. Uh, Dan, Dan, have you been here before? Uh, into Queen Nefertari's I have on a private uh, opportunity. But uh, it's a magnificent tomb. It is very unique. If you look at that paint, we're talking about paint that goes back to the 13th century BC. That's 3,000 300 years ago, basically, 1,200 years ago. Nefertari, uh, you've heard of Nefertiti, which was the wife, was the wife of, uh, uh, of Akhenaten, uh, but this is the wife of Ramses, his first wife. He ruled for 96 years, mm -hmm. you know, from a child on up. And this was his first of all of his wives. And, his and she was considered beautiful also. But this tomb is above King Tut's tomb, which is there, which is also kind of exclusive. You pay extra to go into it. This one, you're going to pay a lot extra, but not you personally. Evidently, it's part of the cruise line's offering, I understand. Yeah, yes, I'll just it is. add something here. Uh, one of the no things crowds make, in here. <laughs> one, of the no. things that, one of the things that makes our cruise and tour so unique is we will go to all the usual or expected sites. Everybody goes to the pyramids. You know, everybody sees the Sphinx. We have included oh, wow. some things that few people Great go picture. to. Now, the entrance fee to, to the tomb of Queen Nefertari is $125 US. And people just don't want to pay it. it. And it's included in our tour. And when you go into this tomb, the brilliance of the paint because it hasn't been polluted, it didn't get robbed, is so bright, it almost looks like wet paint. 
you're looking at that and you want to touch it. Don't you dare touch it, by the way. But you want to yeah. touch it because you're sure that paint is wet. The color. Yeah, you can put so your cool. nose right up against some of that painting and the paint still looks wet. That's how yeah. bright and beautiful it is. Yeah, Brandon, go yeah. ahead. Well, and that's something, uh, again, so this was uh, Ramsey's favorite wife. She was considered to be the most beautiful, also the most well-educated, and uh, he lived well after she passed. And uh, there's a lot of poems and everything in here was his dedication to her and uh, her, her, his well wishes for her when she had passed along. So this, this is a, a beautiful and unique opportunity, which again, they have mentioned, it's included with our excursion. So uh, it's interesting. I always kind of have to laugh when I do this presentation because whenever you cruise in Europe, you go to cathedral after cathedral after cathedral after cathedral. When you are cruising along the Nile, you're going to temple after temple after tomb after temple after tomb. So you're going to get a lot of temples and tombs uh, on this particular itinerary, but they all have beautiful history behind them. Uh, this is the Temple of Horus, uh, built around 200 B.C., just discovered back in 1860. And uh, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the second largest temple in Egypt, right? That's correct. Of course, uh, the largest temple, which really in the world is the largest temple complex, is the one that they will have seen at uh, Karnak. But here, this one is one of the largest. It's on a, uh, in an area there that uh, wouldn't be discovered till the 19th century uh, because of where it is on the Nile as well. But uh, Horus, you'll remember, is also uh, one of the major gods, son of Osiris and, and all, and is, uh, or of, pardon me, not Osiris, uh, son of uh, Amun. And uh, it's, uh, uh, he figures also prominently, you'll see that many of the gods, as you learn about them, take on different persona. At one time they're called Ray, another time they're called Amun, another time they're called Horus even though they may be, have other names like Moot and so forth. So uh, just realize it represents attributes of the gods. Absolutely. Now you guys were just talking about this a little while ago that the Egyptians uh, believe that the Nile was a passage between life and death. So you're going to find uh, tombs on the west side of the river and uh, temples on the east side uh, because the sun rises in the east and the sun sets in the west. Uh, here we just have a beautiful picture of the Nile River. Now something you're going to get to do Faluca. is go on a, a ride on a felucca. Is it felucca or oh, felucca? There, yeah, that's included. That's wonderful. Yep, yeah, it's included. Uh, we're going to go and visit a Nubian village. So the, the Nubians uh, for this part of the world are like the Native Americans for us. They have been here longer than anybody and uh, they, they are known for their archery skills and that uh, their homes are uh, you can see they're beautifully painted they like very colorful uh, decor and uh, they usually put uh, things on their home that represent the, the history or stories of what their families do like if you look you'll see the little boats here on there which means this is family obviously sells along the Nile River and something unique that we do here so most people absolutely go and visit the Nubian village. Something that we do that is special and unique, we actually stay here for lunch and then give you free time to go shopping and explore on your own. And uh, again, I don't know, Larry or Dan, have you had an opportunity to go to the, pick up some of these wonderful spices to maybe bring home? Yeah, it's, it's really a great experience. Of course, the Nubians were, you might even, some of the earliest settlers of the Nile Valley. Uh, dating way, way back there. But I'll just say it's a great experience. You can smell these wonderful uh, cooking aromas, spice aromas. But as Brandon said, I don't know of another tour group that actually has lunch with the people. And that's what will be unique, a real people to people contact. Back to you, Brandon. Excellent. Now, the morning before... Just we maybe one other comment about your visits. Imagine you're going to bazaars, but you're also... This is not like the bazaar in Cairo. So you're going to see this variety of culture. The shops and things that you do in Luxor are entirely different than the Nubian village or uh, the one that you'll see in Cairo with the Khan Khalili. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now, something we do the morning before we go to the Nubian Village, uh, and this is optional. Uh, you, you do have to pre-book this to, to get this, but we go to Abu Simbel. It's $325 per person to pre-book this, but something that we're able to do, and from my understanding, nobody else is able to do this. If you pre-book this before you get on the trip, you are guaranteed to go. Uh, nobody else can guarantee that you're actually going to get there. And this has some very special history. They actually had to move every single piece of this. Uh, it was situated down along the Nile. They built a dam and they moved it, uh, what, 600 feet up above the water to protect it. Yeah, uh, not only that, feet. but the villages as well that were down under what was called Lake Nubia, but yes. is today called uh, uh, Lake Nasser. Lake Nasser. From the Aswan Dam. Now, something that I thought was really funny about this is, uh, uh, what is that, October 3rd or 22nd and February, no, it's October 3rd and February 3rd, you have a uh, light that shines right through the tunnels into the very center, and you have King Ramses in between two gods, and the sun shines directly on King Ramses twice a year. Obviously, he thought very highly of himself. Those four statues in front, which are about 60 feet high, are all of Ramses. And if you'll look very closely, you'll see down along the side, his wife, about the, oh, about 10 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he thought very, very highly of himself. Now, this is an interesting stop along the way. We go to uh, Kam Ambo. Uh, and so Come on, dedicated <laughs> to the uh, falcon god and the crocodile god. Now, something a lot of people don't think about is once upon a time, there used to be a lot of crocodiles in the Nile River. So here, you're going to find a lot of mummified crocodiles, which is uh, something unique. It's not something you're going to see at any of the other temples you're going to visit. And Dan, what is your- and By the way, the crocodile was, of course, the symbol of the Pharaoh, as his portion is represented, I think, for Latter-day Saints. If you look under facsimile one, you'll see that Sobek is there down in the midst of the firmament at the bottom of that figure. And that's what they're talking about here. A lot of the mummies found also, by the way, were found to have met crocodiles a little bit on their legs. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so uh, this has ties to the uh, LDS uh, church as well? Dan? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't quite hear that. No, I was asking, does this have ties to the LDS church? Uh, it's only visited on cruises, typically, Okay. and all on Combo. There, uh, there are reliefs in there that are interesting to us. Excellent. And, uh, I, might, I might just add, uh, all religions, uh, you know, this is not a denominational tour no. at all, but different faiths be from Christians to Muslims to Jews to everyone, will find some affinity there, some connection. That's right. Uh, most of it is all Egyptian history. I, but yes, uh, those of this faith or that faith may find something, but the tour and cruise itself is not a denominational tour. And maybe one other comment, the mysteries of Egypt is what draws a lot of people there. And you know, as much as we want to talk about knowing the hieroglyphics and the things of that nature, so much of ancient Egyptian religious practice and things was never written down. The meanings of the words aren't, we don't know exactly. So most of it is guesswork in a sense, well-meaning guesswork. But uh, you'll find uh, that you'll be as curious looking at all these things as as any archaeologist would be as well. It's well worth seeing these things in situ, in place. Excellent. And uh, obviously we're going to visit Karnak, Karnak along the way. Uh, this is the largest of all the temples you're going to see in Egypt. It covers uh, over 250 acres. Uh, built 2,000 years ago. And you guys, I apologize. I'm going to speed it up just a teeny bit. Uh, we're, we're getting a little short on time, uh, but I'll definitely uh, keep coming back for more feedback because you guys have the experience here. I just have the experience with Ama Waterways. <laughs> uh, now, uh, the Temple of Hathor. Uh, now, Larry and I had been talking about the Temple of Hathor just last week. Um, 
This is one of the best preserved temples along the Nile. And these areas where you see the, the gravel filled, the uh, rectangular areas, uh, once upon a time, these used to be sacred pools and they were not for swimming in, uh, they were considered to be very sacred. And off to the right, as you're looking at that temple, there was also gardens that are still growing some of the palms there and everything. But it is the most complete temple there is. And you'll even see Caesar, that's Julius Caesar's uh, son that he had with Cleopatra the uh, seventh uh, when he took Egypt. And uh, you'll see that relief on the wall as well as Pompeii and other reliefs that are there. Now, as I had mentioned, when you do this, you're going to go to a lot of temples, uh, a lot of tombs, uh, something unique to Alma Waterways to, to just kind of break it up, do things a little differently. We're going to go to the Presidential Palace. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to explore here. We're going to dine here. Dignities from around the world stay here when they come to visit Egypt. And again, nobody else does this. Uh, first and foremost, it's, it's very expensive. But again, we want you to have that amazing and unique experience. So we want to take you here again to just break things up a little bit. And this palace consists of multiple different museums. Just a few to mention. They have a silver museum, arms museum, uh, the Royal Family Museum is here. Uh, it's also uh, home to the official residences, uh, I'm sorry, the, pal the president of Egypt. This is where they reside. So once we get off of the ship, you do have one more night in Cairo, and we want to take you to go and visit Old Cairo. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, uh, been around since uh, the 10th century, is that correct, Dan? Yes, this is, uh, of course, the one of the most beautiful mosques in the world is also located with the Blue, uh, Blue Mosque, the, uh, the uh, Muhammad Ali Alabaster Mosque, I should say. It's located there. and. Uh, that's a fascinating place to go. It, it is well worth it. And for those that may be Muslim that may join us as well, it'll be one of those highlights of all the mosques you could have visited in the world. Yeah, and uh, I, yeah, the mosques are absolutely beautiful. And of course, to get there, you can pass the City of the Dead, which is a whole new experience too. So that summarizes the cruise itself. We do have a, a, a pre-cruise additional option uh, where we do four nights in Jordan. Uh, again, so that you have the comforts of home when you lay your head down at night to rest. We're gonna be uh, at the St. Regis uh, in Amman. Uh, beautiful, luxurious accommodations. Now, this is one of the oldest cities in the world. They actually have statues around town that date back over 7,000 years. And for those of you concerned about the visas getting in and out, uh, when we fly in, we just uh, go in as a group and the visas are taken care of when you arrive at the airport uh, in Amman. And we are also going to, well, it's interesting, anywhere you go in this part of the world, you're going to find Roman history. And how do we know for a fact that it's Romans? <laughs> the columns and the Colosseums. Uh, Jarosh dates back uh, 6,500 years. And uh, it's actually considered to be one of the best examples of Roman influence in the Middle East, obviously outside of Italy. And I think the main reason people really want to go to Jordan, it's right here, Petra. A very impressive civilization, aqueducts bringing water down uh, from the mountains so that they could survive in such a dry climate. They are still unearthing parts of Petra right now. Now this is quite a hike to get there. If you do have mobility issues, uh, I, I, it's a, a donkey and a cart that helps get you down. Uh, Dan, I'm sure that you have experience here as well. Yeah, yeah we were hey, just there a year very, ago. Yeah, you know, I enjoy the walk, but you know, if you have, if you don't feel it's, it's mostly flat, a very gentle incline down. But as Brandon said, uh, they have, uh, you can ride a donkey or get a, uh, like a carriage can take you up and down. And it's, yeah, it's a world class, very fascinating, fascinating visit. And this is just one of many things in Petra. That's the treasury you reckon. Absolutely. 
Now, something different that we're doing here when we stay in Petra, typically we, we use five-star uh, hotels and resorts whenever we're uh, in uh, third world uh, destinations. Uh, we are staying at this place. It's a four-star resort, uh, the Old Village in Jordan. Uh, the reason oh, we chose this place, it's beautiful, it's comfortable, and it is owned by the locals. So we are supporting local business by doing I'll just, this. I'll just say, Dan and I have been, been there to the Old Village Resort. We had dinner there when what uh, about a year ago, Dan? This is a great resort. <laughs> and then after the cruise, for those of you who kind of want to dip your toes in the water of uh, seeing Israel, obviously you're not going to get the, the the full Israel experience, but it's a really good way to just check it out, see what the country is like, get a feel for the culture. We do four nights post in Jerusalem. And uh, also uh, just to, to throw it out there, from what I understand, uh, Larry, you're working on a, a special group for 2022 and you will, you will put together your own pre and post, but these are the things that Alma Waterways has already pre-designed, correct? Right, the group that I will be taking is uh, the, the tour dates, we, the date we start in Egypt and the day we end in Egypt is March 18 to 29. It's 12 days, 11 nights, 12 days, 11 nights. And we at Columbus Travel will be offering our own uh, Jordan option, Israel option. It's done, we're gonna do it a bit differently. The Ama Waterways uh, options are wonderful. They do them well. We just do them a bit differently. And uh, uh, we, on ours, I think, the Jerusalem here is they you stay in Jerusalem. We will have Jerusalem and then actually up uh, a couple of days up in the Galilee. Oh, nice. uh, that's one of the big differences. And I think that's just a very important talk. Uh, I'll just comment the, uh, the Waldorf is a fabulous hotel. We usually stay at a place uh, over near the uh, Damascus Gate. Mm -hmm. uh, where you can walk into the old city easily from the hotel. The garden tomb is 10 minutes. That, that, that's the tomb of resurrection, uh, maybe 10 minutes from the hotel. But I'm not going to give you a, a, a travel log. You don't have to make that decision. Now, this, of course, is Masada down by the Dead Sea uh, the, uh, during the Jewish revolt. But you will get all the details of both the Ama Waterways extension, and you are so welcome to book those. We'll also give you our own Columbus Travel, and you'll see some of the itinerary differences uh, in Jordan and Israel. And then if that's something you want to do, whatever you decide is just great. And, and as Larry mentioned, that was Mount Masada. It is right by the Dead Sea. Uh, something unique with Alma Waterways that we are doing uh, that, from what I understand, no one else who, again, is offering this as one of their extensions. We're going to take you to Masada, but you're so close to the Dead Sea. How can we take you to this part of the world and not let you get in the water for a float? And it, you have to get in the water and float. It is the, the weirdest thing in the world. All you have to do is lift one leg up a little bit, and you are on your back floating. There is so much salt in the water, but it is a beautiful experience, and I highly recommend whether you take our, our tour that we have or Larry's tour that Columbus Travel's putting together, you're absolutely going to love it. I'll say that uh, Israel is one of my favorite places on this planet. Thanks for exploring Egypt and the secrets of the Nile. And by the way, if you're interested in joining me, the getaway guru, on our Egypt tour with a Nile River cruise, just give us a call at Columbus Travel, 800-373-3328, or send me an email at info at columbusvacations.com. And by the way, if you have a topic or a video that you would like to see on my travel channel, send me an email at the same address, info at columbusvacations.com. Now, if you have a question or comment about today's Egypt, and Secrets of the Nile video, you can send me that question or comment in the comment section of this video. As always, stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks for joining me. Happy traveling.